So I just want to show you a couple of those little miscellaneous things that are out there that I think could be useful at some point if you have a lot of code you're doing. But this is a question I had one time about libraries. Somebody asked me, they said, well, problem is Excel doesn't really let you create a library of code. So I researched that a little bit and I came up with this particular answer. So you can just look at this if you feel you need, I don't need to go into this to show you this, but unless you feel there's a need for it. But basically what I do is I create a file and I save that file off as a file called my functions. And I call it, give it an XLA extension. So basically what I do, and it looks like I'm storing it in this Excel start location. And this is a library that I can put out there. Now I can put this file on our shared drive. And every time I, and that could be my library of functions. So in other words, we might have one person might maintain it, that when new functions are added, they can add those new functions in there. So that's code that's available to you that you can simply just cut and paste out. That's kind of a library of code. So you want to write something very similar to what we wrote before, but I want to know where that code is. And so you can put that into this library function. And you simply go to your add-ins and you add this in as an add-in function, see? And you, it's an Excel add-in. That means every time you open up Excel, it loads the add-in. So the add-ins are over here. So you can see that if I go to File, Options, Add-ins here. So these are the add-ins. And there's a lot of add-ins you can put in Excel. There's Power Pivot for Excel, Power View. Here's Power BI, Publisher. So these are add-ins that I've added into the system. So every time I open Excel, it loads the add-ins on there. But you can also add in a file a library file like that so every time you open Excel it automatically loads this library it's always available to you so you don't have to go through and open up a library first see because the problem is if you have five people working on VB and my code is on my computer and the other people don't have access to that code and so this one group I was working with, there's actually eight in the group and they were all doing a lot of VB coding, and they wanted to have something available to them that they could all access and see what the final code was. And so we had one person was maintain that file. The other people could load it and pull that code in there and use it for various purposes. So that's all that is. It just it was this kind of a, a workaround problem that this particular group was having. So then I went through and created a bunch of functions. These are called custom functions. And I simply created, I went through and create, looked at a whole bunch of code and, and put a bunch of stuff in here so that people can look through the code. Now oftentimes, like yourself, you may have some code that other people have written in your company. And I believe that's the case. So that's the code you want to look at. But I did this because if somebody did not have a library of code that they've already written, then they can kind of look through this and see if they can understand what's going on. So you can kind of read through it and see what's going on. So that was my goal of this, is to allow somebody to see if they understand Visual Basic enough to be able to interpret code. And there's some interesting functions out here. This one is select column range, so it selects the column range. It uses all the functions that we've talked about. Here's some active cell in and down, it goes down a little bit. Here's one I really like. This is a fun one. This actually is an Outlook interface. This is code that it connects to the Windows system. And so what this does basically is it sends an email from within Excel. So I can write a function in Excel, click on a button, and have an email file to somebody. And so you can see the what I do is I collect the recipient name here. And then I collect the subject in here, dot subject, dot body. And I collect all these parameters in here. And I'm all done. I simply say my item, which my item was defined up here. 
and my item was defined right here. So we set this my item and you set it to this program. And so when I simply run this program here, it actually runs this code up here. And all this information that gets collected gets sent with the email. So you can put a subject, you can put a body, you can put an attachment here. That's not an attachment. Here's the attachment here. You can add an attachment or a file, and basically you can send email. So this is just some basic code that if you needed to do this, that way you can maybe have a, a situation where somebody, you can have a little button there that says, click here for help. And so it would actually just, you click on there, and then it would actually save the file off and then email the file to you. Maybe puts, have them type some notes in there of what their problem was. And so you not only see what their question was, but you also see the file they were actually working on or something like that, you know. I never seen anybody really use it before, but I thought it was rather interesting. That's <laughs> all. And uh, when I saw it, I thought yeah, it's kind of cool. You know, you can actually do that within. So there's so many things you can do like this that are just like beyond what we don't even think we can do. So again, this is just some other code that we went through, and this will show you how to sort worksheets. So if you want to sort them in an alphabetical order, then this is a code that will actually sort these, and you can you can alphabetize them. Uh, this is uh, some copy sheet features. There's uh, some go tos and some if error numbers. It's looking for an error system and it's trying to find oh if it's this error that error then it does something certain things. And then right on down the line, it's there's just I just put a whole bunch of stuff out here so you can go back and look at that if you like. Don't forget about the glossary. It's kind of a nice page to keep because this is a quick reference to the book. And so you might want to consider either printing this page out and putting it in the front of the book. Maybe that's what I should do, actually. Just put it in the front of the book instead of the back of the book because uh, it's, it's a good reference to have and to see you know, how to reference things. So if it's in the back of the book, maybe it's harder to find. You know what I mean? People may not remember it's there. So. Maybe I should move it to the front of the book. And then we also have the table, the index here at the back that you can research for things also. So just a quick find, quick information to look for information that way.